after the last banking crisis politicians and regulators promised us that it would never happen again. Yet here we are. As big banks go bust like it's 2007-8, the authorities are racing to throw money at them all over again. It's incredible how politicians struggle to stump up much-needed cash for pensions, roads and schools, only to conjure up billions. When the greedy banks rock up with their sob stories, the magic money tree does exist after all. It's locked away in a vault ready to clear up the next banking system blowout. Today's banking crisis wasn't supposed to happen. Not after the last time. When British taxpayers spent 137 billion, bailing out Royal Bank of Scotland and the rest. While most of that money was repaid, eventually, the bailouts were only the start. To avert total meltdown, the Bank of England slashed interest rates to almost zero and pumped out a staggering £895 billion worth of stimulus via quantitative easing. At last count, the UK stands to make a £200 billion loss on that, with taxpayers picking up the tab again. The country's entire monetary policy was being revised to please the banking sector which was responsible for the meltdown in the first place. And were they grateful? Their jobs secured, bankers went straight back to what they do best, which is squabbling about the size of their bonuses, as if they'd done nothing wrong at all. Ordinary Britons have paid a huge price for the era of cheap and easy money. Savers who did the right thing by squirreling away money for retirement got next to nothing on their cash deposits. The big high street banks didn't even blush. Instead, they trousered more government largess via the funding for lending scheme and slashed savings rates again. Shameless is one word for their behavior. You may wish to substitute more colorful phrases. Near zero interest rates sent house prices rocketing pushed affordability to record highs, and elbowed first-time buyers out of the property market altogether. They also helped turbocharge as tech stock hype and cryptocurrency nonsense as investors leveraged up and threw money at high-risk assets to make a fast buck. Monetary and fiscal stimulus is ultimately driving today's inflationary surge, which has triggered another banking crash. As central bankers try, and fail, to normalize policy. Now there are calls for a swift return to low interest rates and key. Bankers would love that. We are stuck in an endless vicious cycle. Where reckless banking activity triggers one crisis. And the solutions pave the way for the next one. Bankers make fortunes in the boom, knowing we'll step in if they go bust. After the last crisis. The Bank of England took charge. A scary phrase if ever I've heard one. Its financial policy committee is in charge of banking stability. Its prudential regulation authority oversees banking resilience. And the financial conduct authority makes sure bankers behave themselves. Good luck with that. That's a lot of committees for just one industry although to be fair. So far the UK has escaped the current crisis. Elsewhere, they're falling like dominoes. Or would be if regulators weren't racing to their rescue. Buckets of cash in hand. The US Treasury is directly guaranteeing depositors of collapsed Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank and pretty much the entire regional banking sector. It knows that if it doesn't, contagion will spread like wildfire as customers panic and demand their cash back. The Swiss National Bank somehow found $44 billion to save Credit Suisse. It's been suggested this was enough to bankrupt Switzerland. But they handed it over anyway. That's what you do when you've got a knife at your throat. You pay and pay and pay. The global banking system is highly interconnected. If one link in the chain breaks, everything falls apart. Given the risk. You'd think we'd be doing everything to make sure the system is solid. 
Instead, banking is a byword for excessive risk-taking. By bailing out the bankers again, we've given them the green light to carry on gambling with other people's money. This banking crisis isn't even over yet we are already laying the groundwork for the next one. By pledging to cover all losses, we are telling the banks they can take as many risks as they like. Because everyone else will pick up the pieces. Again and again and again.